Hi everyone and thank you for joining me for another Distress Oxide colour combination video and today we're looking at pine needles. I've been really excited to uh, get to this colour because I think it's absolutely beautiful. If you know me well at all you'll know I really love my teal colours and this is one of the darkest of the teals and greens that we have within the Distress Oxide range. Um, this is also um, applicable to inks if you only own inks. We can still look at the colours, there might be a slight difference in shade being ink, uh, pigment ink rather than a, sorry, a dye ink rather than a pigment oxide, but it will be similar and certainly the combinations you can use for both inks and oxides. So the first thing we are going to do is swatch pine needles, um, a, like I say a beautiful, beautiful bright green. Let's pop it onto the end here, look how yummy this is. Now, I'm not going to go up too far because it's a very, very strong colour. Now let's take a look at this. First of all, the ink pad is really close. I love that because sometimes um, if we don't already have a swatch chart made up, and I will show you this in a moment, um, sometimes it's really hard to gauge from the label, but as you can see, the label is really quite close as well. Maybe if anything, the label's a little bit darker than what you'd um, expect when you do swatch this onto white cardstock, but also the ink pad is quite similar, which is really helpful. Now let's just give this a quick wipe and then we'll look at my colour chart. Now the colour chart is available for you to download and print off at home completely for free. I don't even ask you for an email address or anything to download this from my website. It is linked in the description below so you'll find the link there. Um, just scroll down and you'll find it with the word free in bold so you can easily see it. Now, it doesn't come filled in, it comes in in black and white with the spaces for you to fill this in as and when you have the colours. So this just means that you can see clearly which colours you have, which will go together and which ones you still need to buy more importantly as well. So let's take a look at these greens, uh, let's just bring the blues in as well because this is a teal um, and this is pine needles just here as you can see. Um, now. There's a few colours that I think are similar in the range. As you can see here, me holding this over, Lucky Clover, I think, is quite similar. That just means if you've got Lucky Clover rather than Pine Needles, the combinations that I'm showing you today, you could substitute um, with Lucky Clover and you could maybe make those combinations fairly similar. Rustic Wilderness is much more green rather than that teal side, so more of a yellow base than a blue base. Um, evergreen bow is definitely paler still quite close but definitely a paler color ice spruce nowhere near um, and peacock feathers is definitely has more of the blue in it so as you can see pine needles and lucky clover really quite similar now I'm also today going to be showing you um, a different technique for mixing your inks and how it looks so that will come after the colour combination so definitely stay tuned today a little bit longer. So let's do our first colour combination and I'm going to be doing a tonal one so that's with these three so I've got peacock feathers and salvage patina there so let's lift the lids off these. Now when I say tonal I just mean it's going to go from dark to light within a similar sort of colour range so I'm not going to be changing or switching up colours too much. So uh, pine needles into peacock feathers first of all, you can see we're edging more towards the blues with this but the two do blend so beautifully because they're both reasonably dark. So just now my pine needles has of course dried a little so I'll need to kind of reinvigorate that on the end there where we're doing the blending. Now the blending I do in little circles as always. Um, somebody did comment recently and say I wonder how many times you, throughout this series you've said little circles. I have lost track. Probably an awful lot. But you can see how those little circles do make for perfect blending. Now a quick wipe of these darker colours off my mat. And of course a quick dry as well and then we're going to go into the salvage patina which is more like the peacock colors um, or peacock feather colors but much much lighter and sort of a mint green I do love this color also so mix this on you can see which of my ink pads have recently been re-inked or are brand new and which ones could do with a little more so just bringing that up to where my peacock feathers sort of finishes. I'm not going to be blending just yet. 
Um, because I blended the pine needles quite far up, I'm actually going to blend in with the peacock feathers, bring that a little bit further up into the salvage patina. So working my way upwards in those tiny little circles and it just does work nicely. There we go. So there, beautiful. We've got pine needles at the bottom here, peacock feathers in the middle and salvage patina at the top. Now, of course, a little quick tidy up and then I'll have another combination video for you. Sorry, a combination um, for you. And that's going to be, is that a dry, pine needles going into um we're actually not going to do it in the middle we're going to do ice spruce first then pine needles then aged mahogany and then festive berries so let's take a look at this one so iced spruce first which is more of a gray green now this is definitely very much a festive combination i do think pine needles not only because of its name but also because of its color it really does lend itself well to sort of that festive feel. A little bit of pine needles, not too much because it is such a strong colour, but also because mine is really quite a juicy ink pad at the moment. So do be wary of that if you've got ink pads that you've recently re-inked or they're new, they're going to be a little bit juicier and they're going to apply much quicker and easier. And that just makes the colour stronger as well. So I'm just mixing the two here in the middle Again, with those little circles, you can see how much more gray the iced spruce is. And then because I'm switching to the reds with the aged mahogany, I'm just going to give this a wipe. Okay, and so aged mahogany, I've chosen to go into this one next because it really is quite a dark color also. So I think it will mix nicely in with the pine needles. So I'll do my lighter end there that will go into festive berries in a moment. And a little bit darker just here. So just picking up the corners. Then I'm going to pick up some more pine needles, go through the centre first where the solid colour is, where I haven't done any blending, and then start blending into the aged mahogany. So I don't go directly with my brush with fresh ink down onto the blend line. I go a little bit, a little bit further into the solid first and then work my way in. And this means I don't get any shocks when I'm trying to blend the two and I don't accidentally put a big blob of green down where I've actually just spent time blending it in. So you can see there, lovely. So if you want to, you can easily take just say three of the colors in a combination or two of the colors in a three color combination and just use those you don't always have to go with all of the colors and then we're going a little bit brighter into the end here with festive berries so again a very christmasy um, themed color but much much brighter as you can see get that solid color all on the end there and then just pick up a little bit of aged mahogany and just blend that in little tiny circles again there we go chopping and changing kind of seesawing between the two and as i always say with um, any color combination when it's dried if you've used oxides rather than inks when it's dried it gets this lovely cloudy kind of um it's a little bit like um, a softness to it and it just it's almost like a chalky effect to it and it just makes your blending look even better you can see here there's a few little patches where it's not perfect but then look how perfect this is now because this has now dried and this will dry as well now I'm going to use these four colors and I'm going to do the same combination again but with a different technique which is what I promised you at the beginning and this is just another way of blending these combinations and this is absolutely any that I give you um, to create a different background but using those colors if you love them now I'm going to switch for a different mat a larger mat because this does take a little more space and I'm going to take the four colors again I'm going to keep them in the same order so you can really see the difference and what I'm going to do is just do a bit of a smooch of each one all in a line a little bit more 
of that one <coughs> and then a little bit more of that one okay I'll just pop the lids on these so that they don't dry out because it is very warm here today and I'm going to spritz this with a little water so kind of I've got about seven or eight spritzes of water there now I'm using a larger piece of cardstock and I do use larger cardstock when I'm doing this is the smooching technique when I'm doing this I do try to use larger pieces of cardstock just because um, it, it's really messy if you don't so I'm going to press this in and I'm just going to give it a wiggle side to side while it's in the ink and lift it up and down a couple of times there we go lovely so just give that a few moments to dry and then maybe press it in again and what's going to happen is those colors are going to mix but essentially you're still going to have that same sort of combination now let me clean up the excess here it dries really nice quite quickly let me blot the excess off here so we can really see those colors there we go if you love distressed backgrounds and you like watercolor effects that's a really nice quick way of using the same combination but getting a very different look but definitely try them out because in general the combinations that I'm giving you in these distress oxide videos are not going to have um, any sort of muddiness to them when you mix them now if you'd have placed these four colors in a cube in a square so they're all touching each other when you smooch them you may well get some sort of muddiness and you might have a little bit through here but in general in the order that I've given them to you for blending if you were to smooch them in that order you're not going to get that um, sort of muddiness between any of them now isn't it funny how now these two are wet with the water they actually look quite similar whereas blended like this you can definitely see the darkness of the uh, aged mahogany so let's just take a look at that first combination as well now that has completely dried and don't forget of course please do subscribe to my youtube channel and don't forget to go and check out the playlist with all the other colors I'm uploading them alphabetically and we're already on the peas so thank you so much for joining me today and I hope to see you again very soon